Hello and welcome to this video. Based on the request from a subscriber, we are going to do a question from AS level that is accounting paper 2, wherein 22 October November 2018, question 3 based on company accounts. So the question states that the part of the equity of a limited company consists of ordinary shares. We are required to explain two reasons why the company may make a bonus share issue. Bonus shares, these are the shares which are given for free to the existing ordinary shareholders in the ratio of the stockholding capacity of the ordinary shareholders. What does that mean? It means that if the bonus shares are issued in the ratio of 1 is to 1, that means an ordinary shareholder is holding one share in the company. The shareholder will receive additional one more share in the form of bonus share or it may be given in the form of one is to two. That is if ordinary shareholder is holding one share in the company, he may receive two additional shares in the form of bonus shares and these shares are issued for free. Now, why do the company give shares to the existing shareholder in the form of bonus shares? We are going to understand this by stating the reasons given in this answer. Bonus shares can be issued for capitalization of non-distributive reserves. You see, all the reserves and surplus belongs to the ordinary shareholders after the because we make this reserves and surplus after the payment to the preference shareholders. So whatever left belongs to the ordinary shareholders. So these are the reserves and surpluses which belongs to ordinary shareholders and this is given to them in the form of a bonus share. But these reserves like capital reserves, some example are share premium or the revaluation reserves cannot be distributed in the form of cash because the law does not permit it. So these reserves are distributed to the shareholders in the form of bonus shares. So this is what I mentioned here. Bonus shares can be issued for capitalization of non-distributive reserves. Although all reserves belongs to ordinary shareholders, capital reserves like share premium cannot be distributed as cash dividend to the shareholders and hence are given in the form of bonus shares. Second reason is there may be occasions where the business may be facing liquidity issues. They may not have sufficient liquid assets to pay the current liabilities. In that situation, like example, if they need additional working capital or they need to maintain cash reserves for a planned project, in such situations, the company can reward the shareholders by distributing the revenue reserves, that is the retained earning or the profit, in the form of bonus shares rather than in the form of cash. In this way, they can retain the cash in the company and they may not face liquidity issues. Or it may be to keep the shareholders happy when the company is not earning sufficient profits and they want to keep the shareholders happy, what they can do is they can reward the shareholders by issuing the bonus shares even when the company does not earn sufficient profit because this can be rewarded from the capital reserves and hence still the shareholders may receive the dividend in the form of shares, not in the form of cash. Or another reason can be it will be to improve the perception of the company size by increasing the issued share capital of the company. Say before the issue of the bonus share, the ordinary share capital was 5000 and after the issue of 1 is to 1 bonus share, that means for every one share you held, you are going to get additional one share. The issued ordinary share capital will be $10,000. No doubt the reserves will decrease but still the share capital will show a huge increase and this may give a perception that the size of the company is big. Just to show this, they may be issuing 
bonus shares to the shareholders. So these are the four reasons. Out of this, you can state any two reasons for this bit. In the second bit, we are asked to state three uses of share premium account other than issue of bonus shares. We have seen in the first bit that pre, uh, share premium account can be used for the issue of bonus shares. Now we have to state other three uses. So the first reason which I have stated here is we can use the share premium account to write off the expenses related to the company formation. The term which we use for the expenses related to the company formation is called as preliminary expenses and these preliminary expenses can be written off using the share premium account. Next, this can be used to write off the expenses related to the issue of debentures. When we are issuing debentures, there may be certain expenses and this can be written off using the share premium account like we can write off the discount allowed on the issue of debentures or commission paid for the issue of debentures using the share premium account. And in the third term uh, use, I have mentioned that share premium account can be used for providing the premium payable on redemption of any redeemable preference shares or debentures of the company. Redemption means to buy back. Redeemable, that means we have issued these preference shares or debentures to buy back these shares in future. When we are issuing any redeem, uh, redeemable preference share or redeemable debentures, that means we, have, we want to buy back these shares or debentures after a period of time like me maybe after five years or ten years we want to buy it back so at that time we give them a redeemable preference share or redeemable debentures and when we are re redeeming it that is when there is a redemption we are buying it back and we are buying it back at a premium this premium is paid from the share premium account i have given an example here say if the preference shares were issued at five percent premium and are redeemed that is by or purchased back at 5% premium then such premium on redemption is paid from the share premium account. So these are the three reasons for, for which we can use the share premium account. Further we have additional information on 1st January 2017 the issued share capital of S Limited consists of ordinary shares of $0.40 each. The following information is available for the year ended 31st December 2017. On 1st April 2017, the company issued 6% debenture of $300,000. On 1st May 2017, the company paid a final dividend of $0.04 per ordinary share. On 1st October 2017, the company made the right issue of one ordinary share for each four held. The shares are offered at 20% discount on the market price of $1.45. The right issue was fully subscribed. On 15th October 2017, the company paid an in-team dividend of 0.015 dollars per share to the shareholders who were on the share register at 1st August 2017. Fifth, the company's profit from operation for the year was $268,500. We are required to make the statement of change in equity for the year ended 31st December 2017 and here they have already given us the format of the statement of change in equity. We just need to complete this given table. So we are going to take each and every adjustment, do the working and then complete the statement of change of equity. So let's do the working. On 1st April 2017, the company issued a 6% debenture of $300,000. That means 6% is the rate of interest. So when we calculate the interest on debenture, we take this $300,000 times 6 by 100, that is 6%, 
and it was issued on 1st April. So from 1st April till 31st December, it will be 9 months out of 12. So the interest on debenture will be $13,500. On 1st May 2017, the company paid a final dividend of $0.04 per sh ordinary share. We don't know the total number of ordinary shares. So to calculate this, we are going to use the information. On 1st January 2017, the issued share capital of S Limited consists of ordinary share of 40 cents. That is one share of 40 cents. Furthermore, the information given in the change in equity states that ordinary share capital brought forward on 1st January 2017 was $1,250,000. So, if one share, the price face value will be 40 cents. Then, if this is the amount that is $1,250,000, what will be the total number of share issued? Cross multiply it, you will get the the number of ordinary share issue as $1,250,000 divided by 40 cents, it will be 3,125,000 shares issued. So as this is the total number of shares issued, we will multiply it with the dividend paid per share. Then when we multiply it, the total dividend paid for all the ordinary shareholders will be $125,000. Then on 1st October 2017, the company made a right issue of one ordinary share for every four held. The share were offered at 20% discount on the market price of $1.45. The right issue was fully subscribed. That is, if you, if you have four shares, you will get one more ordinary share as right issue. Uh, and if you have 3,125,000 shares, how many right issue shares were made? It will be cross multiplication again. That is 3,125,000 times 1 divided by 4. The total number will be 781,250 issue of shares. So, when we have issued this many number of shares as right issue, how much ordinary capital have been increased? That is, it will be the number of shares issued times the face value of shares. We get $312,500 as additional ordinary capital because of the right issue of shares. Apart from the calculation of additional ordinary capital, we can also calculate share premium from this adjustment. So let's do that. Here, the given information is the shares were offered at 20% discount on the market price of $1.45. So, let's calculate this discount that is $1.45 times 20. So, it will be $0.29. This will be the amount of discount for each share. So, what will be the selling price of each share? We'll take this market price that is $1.45 minus $0.29. So the selling price for each share will be $1.16. So we know that anything excess to the face value of share is the share premium. And we know the face value of share was 40 cents. So the share premium per share is 1.16 minus 40 cents will be 76 cents or 0.76 dollars so this is for one share but with the right issue we have issued 781,250 shares so we will multiply it with the number of shares we have issued to get the total share premium which will be 593,750 dollars Next adjustment says that on 15th October 2017, the company paid an interim dividend of 0.015 per share to the shareholders who were registered on the share register at 1st August 2017. So it was only for those shareholders who were already holding the shares on 1st August 2017. When was the right issue done? It was done on 1st October 2017. So the interim dividend will be paid to those shareholders who were having the share before 1st August that was 
those shares which was issued on 1st January and we did the calculation in the first working notes and the total number of shares there was 3,125,000. So these are those shares which we are going to take to calculate the in team dividend and we will multiply with the amount given here that is $0.015. We get the in stream dividend as $46,000. $875. Next, the other information given is the company's profit for op from operation for the year was $285,500. So, this will be the part of our income statement and not for the statement of change in equity. In the statement of change in equity we take the profit for the year so we have to calculate the profit from the for the year from this information so we'll take this operating profit from there we are going to subtract the financial cost which we calculated in the first bit that was the interest on debenture and that will be subtracted 13,500 and we'll get the profit for the year as $255,000 now we have all the information now we will make the table of statement of change in equity so now we are going to make the statement of change in equity for the year ended 31st December 2017. This table was already given in the question and even the first row was already mentioned in the question. We are going to start from the profit for the year which we have calculated in the fifth working notes and we are going to write it in the total. Then we are going to write the dividend which have been paid, the final dividend which was calculated in the second working notes and the interim dividend which was calculated in the fourth work, uh, working notes both the dividends as they are paid they are going to be subtracted so we are going to right now mention it here and subtract it from the total at the end then the issue of ordinary shares which we have uh, calculated in the third working notes where there was a right issue of ordinary shares the additional capital which we have calculated will be mentioned here share premium which we have calculated will be mentioned here both of this were calculated in the third working notes and then we are going to total it up and write it in the total then we are going to total each column and we are going to write the total here and we are going to total this total column as well as we are going to check it with the total of this row and once both of them are same that means we have completed the statement of change in equity for the year ended 31st December 2017. So in the last part of the question that is C bit of the question it is given that state the general entry required to record revaluation increase in the value of non-current assets. So you know how do we do the um, uh, general entry or how do we get the debit on the or the credit for general or ledgers we usually do it on the basis of accounting equation our accounting equation states that assets is equals to capital plus liability any increase on this side of accounting equation that is any increase in the assets will be debited and any increase on the other side of the equation that is any increase in capital or liability will be credited with revaluation there is an increase in the value of non-current assets hence non-current assets will be debited and with revaluation again there will be the increase in the capital reserves hence revaluation reserves will be credited so the general entry will be debit non-current assets credit revaluation reserves with this we end this question thanks for watching and have a great life